Hi friends and welcome to Storytime. Today we're going to continue reading Misty of Chincoteague. We're on chapter 16 and for those of you just joining us, please make sure you go back and listen to chapters 1 through 15 or you might not quite know what's going on up until now because we're nearing the end of our book. So for those of you that have been waiting, let's get started and see what happens next. Chapter 16 is titled, The Pulley Bone. The next three months were filled with excitement for Phantom and her owners. Paul and Maureen were conditioning her for the big race. They fed her more liberally on grain. They rode her three miles each day, starting off at a slow jog, then trotting her, then asking for a burst of speed midway of the ride, and then slowly jogging her back home again. It was the early morning when the world was all red and gold with the rising sun that Paul and Maureen chose for Phantom's training period. They would take turns riding her across the tundra-like beach, hard packed after a rain, up and down Main Street where her hooves sounded like seashells pinging against the pavement over trails carpeted with pine needles where she made no sound at all. They rode her out to the pony penning grounds, getting her used to the feel of the track and the sight of the white fence. Before long, the phantom came to be a familiar and glorious sight. Her fame grew and spread. Now on pleasant Sundays, visitors from the mainland began coming to see her. Misty grew jealous of the attentions her mother was getting. She would nose in, trying to nip the buttons from the men's coats or the flowers on the ladies' hats. One time, she lifted a hat all covered over with roses and dropped it in a water barrel. This brought Grandpa Bebe running with a handful of gunny sacks. He pretended to be angry as he rescued the dripping hat and tried to dry it off with the sacks. Paul and Maureen, he would shout in his thunderous voice, Ain't you never going to drive any sense into that Misty's head? She'll grow up thinking she's a baby all her days. Never nee seen such a critter so meddlesome. As July came in and pony penning day grew near, something came between Paul and Maureen. If Paul worked around the barnyard, Maureen made some excuse to go off down to the oysters boats to see if the men had brought up any sea stars in their oyster tongs. And if Maureen worked at home for Grandpa or Grandma, Paul went off treading clams for Kim horse pepper or catching seahorses. What's the matter, twixt Paul and Maureen? Grandma asked Grandpa one night after the house was still. I don't know for sure, my knee, but I suspicion it's about the race, Grandpa replied. Why, I thought it was all settled. Ain't the phantom going to run? Of course, but the catch is, who's to ride her? They both hankering to ride, questioned Grandma. That's my guess, Grandpa nodded. Finally, on Monday morning before pony penning, Grandma asked the question right out. She and Maureen were hanging up clothes at the time while Paul, perched on top of a chicken coop, was silently whittling a pole into a clothes prop. Which of ye, Grandma said, as she moved a clothespin from her mouth, which of ye will ride Phantom in the big race? A long silence was the only answer. Well, well, said Grandma brightly, if you won't state your yet rathers, I got a fine idea. Still no answer. Maureen shook the creases out of a tablecloth cloth, as if her life depended on it. Paul kept on whittling furiously. Just then, Grandpa Beebe came by. He glanced around sharply. Why's everyone so hushed? He asked, except for her flapping of the clothes. I think it was Sunday meeting time. Why, I just asked who's to ride Phantom come pony penning day, replied Grandma, hanging her clothespin bag on the line and looking from one to the other. Oh, and Grandpa stung the little word out until it seemed to have springs in it. He dropped the post hole digger he was carrying and towed it with his boots.
seconds went by. If I wasn't in my 73, he shook his finger. If I wasn't in my 73 going on my 74, I'd settle the whole matter and write her myself. Grandma straightened up from the clothes basket. Clarence, she said, speaking loud enough so her voice would reach Paul. Seems like something told me to save the pulley bone from that marsh hen. It's hanging above the almanac in the kitchen. Grandpa slapped his thigh. Nothing could be fairer than a pulley bone, he exclaimed. The one that breaks off the biggest part gets to ride. I'll fetch it, Maureen called over her shoulder as she disappeared into the kitchen. She came out holding one end of the wishbone very gingerly, as though it might break off in her hand. Now then, Grandpa cleared his throat nervously. Grandma picked up the empty clothes basket and set it down again in the very same spot. Now then, Grandpa repeated, stop that goldrum whittling and set up, Paul. Paul's leg seemed as wobbly as a colt's. He came forward very slowly and his hand shook as he grasped the other end of the wishbone with his thumb and his forefinger. Squinch your eyes tight, Grandma directed. Make your wish and then when I count three, pull! Paul and Maureen each took a long, deep breath as they clutched the tiny wishbone that was so was to decide their fate. One, Grandma counted slowly. Two it is. And three! With a slight cracking noise, the wishbone broke. The larger half was in Paul's hand. He gave a whistle of joy, then his face sombered as he caught sight of Maureen, who was burying her half of the wishbone in the sandy soil. She looked up, trying to cover her feelings with a little smile. You won, Paul, she said, blinking. You'll write her better anyhow. And that's the end of chapter 16. Stay tuned for chapter 17. That's coming up next. I'll see you real soon. Until then, make this a great day. Stay awesome. Bye.